Welcome everyone to the first episode of the Rust GUI World. Today we'll be comparing two titans in the realm of cross-platform Rust GUI development, Slint and Iced. Introducing Slint, which builds itself as an efficient toolkit for crafting fluid GUIs with a blazing fast OpenGL renderer. In my time using Slint, it's lived up to its claims of performance and boasts the widest platform support among all the Rust UI libraries, with support for Windows, Linux, Mac, Android, and Web. Slint stands out for me by supporting languages beyond Rust, including C++ and JavaScript, and eventually Python. Additionally, it keeps GUI code separate from logic in dedicated .slint files. However, tooling for editing .slint files within new Vim seems inconsistent and unstable at the moment. In the other corner, we have Iced, the language that powers the cosmic desktop environment, being built by System76. Ice is a well-known member of the Big 3 Rust GUI libraries, alongside eGUI and U. While not yet production ready, it already supports Windows, Linux, Mac, and even Web. Ice shines with its simplicity and ARM-inspired architecture. If you're interested in learning about GUIs, the ARM architecture is definitely worth exploring in your free time and is definitely my favorite way of doing it. For the creation period of today's episode, I built the same AI chatbot in both Slint and Ice. This application, powered by Olama, is a great test case because it covers various modern development aspects like asynchronous code handling when querying the AI and iterating GUI elements when displaying multiple chat bubbles. Here are the applications side by side. However, a heads up before diving deeper. The ICE version seems more developed because it became my primary AI chat app since creating these demos. This speaks volumes about ICE's fantastic developer experience and ease of use. Now, let's build a count app together using each GUI framework. Okay, so now I have the ice version of the counter app done. We have a plus, minus, we have randomized, all of the basic stuff that a counter application would need. You can go as far as you want, you can randomize, all that. So if you look here, as mentioned previously, ice does use the ARM architecture. So we have our model, which is the struct. We have our view here and then we have an update so very well segmented into each of its different parts and it makes it pretty easy to work with so that is basic outline of how this application works you could go further and dip like the messages how um all of these um ui elements or at least some of them will have callbacks that will call i guess a message and that will be sent to the update function and um, using match or an alternative um, way of pattern matching you can do the changes you want whatever values you want within the program and then the view will be re-rendered so I guess on to Slint Okay, so now we have the Slint version of this application finished. So, here it is. It's uh, all light themed. I would make a dark theme, but I don't have the time for that. So here we have the .slint file, where all of the GUI widgets are placed into. As you can see, all of the widgets are edited and modified using um, properties. So like here, text and callbacks which are like here where we have a callback that um, will increase the value and that callback will be handled in our main.rs where we're saying ui on request increase value then i'm just setting the ui's count which is just this exported integer 
into being the count plus one and negative one and random number between zero and a hundred. The regular stuff. So, yeah, it's very similar to if you've used HTML or something, you kind of notice this design pattern and especially flutter. That's what this really does remind me of. But um, I did, was having issues with them. The LSP for Slint, as you can see, it's not really working on your film, which is truly unfortunate. But otherwise, this has been an absolutely terrific experience with Slint. Great documentation and overall great framework. Finally, it's ranking time. I'll be scoring each framework on a scale of 1 to 5 in 5 different categories, totaling a maximum of 25 points. These categories are Community Support and Documentation, Developer Experience, Tooling, Operating System Support, and lastly, Theming. Firstly, we have Slint. And for Operating System Support, I'm giving Slint 4 out of 5, because as mentioned earlier, Slint boasts impressive platform coverage. Despite NeoVim's hiccups, Slint integrates well with Rust Analyzer, salvaging at some points, so 3 out of 5 for tooling. Slint has a decent sized community with 120k downloads on Crates.io. Its documentation is excellent, explaining crucial aspects like custom widgets and offering a good pool of examples. 3.5 out of 5 for community support and documentation. Developer experience, I'm giving Slint 2.5 out of 5. Personally, I found it challenging to manage two separate systems with Slint leading to confusion and variable duplication due to incompatibility with some Rust libraries. This trade-off stems from its multi-language support. It raises a question, can a framework excel in any single language if it tries to support multiple ones? Next, we have theming. Slint shines in theming. It offers a rare level of customization compared to other Rust frameworks built from scratch. This sets the bar high and earns it a perfect score, 5 out of 5. Next, we have Iced, which for operating system support, earned itself a 3 out of 5. While not as extensive as Slint, Iced still covers all major PC operating systems and web, making your applications widely deployable. Although I think this is going to be a common experience throughout this entire series, I'm going to give Iced a 5 out of 5 for tooling. It offers a comprehensive and user-friendly experience, making development smooth and efficient and it also couples really well with Rust Analyzer and worked incredibly well in NeoVim. So, 5 out of 5. This is kind of disappointing for Iced. Despite a large community with over 500k downloads on Crates.io and a very active Discord server, I'm going to have to give Iced a 2 out of 5 for community support and documentation. Iced documentation needs improvement. It can be confusing, spread across multiple crates, and lacks clear guidance for the beginners. This can lead to inefficient code, especially for those new to the framework. And it will continue to harm ice throughout this entire. So, next to developer experience, this is um, I's second highest ranking point. And it's kind of obvious for me as an Elm enthusiast. I appreciate ice and implementation of the Elm architecture, the clear separation into model view and update functions, along with the Rust strings, makes development intuitive, especially after overcoming the initial documentation hurdle. Honestly, I wanted to give it a 5 out of 5, but it's going to have to settle for 4 out of 5. Iced prioritizes UI consistency over extensive theming options, which has its advantage, with the Iced UI having a more polished look. However, it does limit customization in comparison to Slint. However, I am mainly giving it its score due to the built-in cat pushing theming. Absolutely incredible. So, 3 out of 5 for theming. While I favor ICE approach, Slim takes the narrow victory here with 18 points to I 17 points. Both frameworks have strengths and weaknesses, and I hope they continue to evolve and become industry leaders in the future. The next episode, however, will be about a debate as old as Rust. Leptos versus Dioxus. Which web framework will come out as Victor? See you on the Rust Wars Episode 2.